Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. We are out here with our AeroLock 88 series shoot and we are preg checking cows. So this is another year of me uh, pulling blood samples to preg check the cows. And I started doing it last year. I liked it because it was very convenient for me. Um, I can do it at my convenience. Uh, having the vet here is nice because you have another person that can help run the shoot. Uh, it helps things go a lot faster when you have more people. Um, on the other hand, I think that having only one person here, which is nice because the way, the way we have our gates set up is that this can be a one-man operation. And uh, what I've been doing is I've been running the cows in the chute. I've been closing the back gate on them as they run in. Um, the bars on the front of the chute let light through so the cows are not hesitant to run into it much at all. And... Um, by the time they run up to the front and figure out, hey, it's not open, I can't get through, and they start slowly backing up, I can close the gate on them in no time. But um, we've got number 23 in the chute today. She's one of our calmer cows. Uh, we're going to be pl pulling a blood sample. So we're going to be pulling it from the base of the tail, uh, similar to how we did last year. So this is going to be a shorter and sweet video on how to pull a blood sample. Uh, I was looking online and I was looking at the different tests that you can actually pull. Um, what we're pulling is the serum, so there's no anticoagulant in the test tubes to keep the blood from coagulating. And uh, there's different test vials for, di or there's different vials for different tests that you want to run. And uh, I'm looking at doing a couple of those in the future, but just for now, we're just pulling these blood samples uh, for the cows to figure out which ones are open because we're trying to be as productive as possible. Uh, my records have really gotten bulletproof over the last two years, and I have a decent uh, uh, breeding history on the cows. I've been giving them second chances, trying to improve things to make sure that I'm not calling cows that you know I may be having other issues with. I think I'm finally down to the point now where I just need to start. Uh, I've done everything that I can for the cows to make sure that they are getting uh, bred or they have an ample chance to breed, and. Now it's come down time to where I need to start culling cows out because I know that I do have three-year-old heifers in here that haven't bred. And if they don't get bred this time around, they need to go down the road. So um, now that we've been fattening our steers out, I have a little bit more experience taking our cows other places to try to market them a little bit better. And um, we found a place fairly local that I like taking them into because I can weigh them individually um, as I unload them and see what their final weights are. So number 23 is in here. Uh, as of today, the cows are only getting uh, pour on, which it's snowing. Um, not too crazy about that. So what I'm doing is I'm cleaning off the cows and then I'm pouring uh, on their backs. That's treating them for any kind of worms or anything, um, parasites. And then we're just going to lift her tail up and we're gonna uh i'm gonna explain how you try to do it as accurately as possible because i don't consider myself an expert by any means um this is not vet advice i'm not a vet i'm not licensed please don't you know take anything i say as true um i'm just kind of gonna repeat what i've learned doing it for the last two years and i had a little bit of refresher the first couple i i felt i feel pretty bad because i didn't get their their samples pulled right away um however the ones I ran 23 yesterday and all of them I didn't have a single issue pulling blood from. So um, let's go grab our vial, get set up, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Hey, honey. Thank you for being so patient. Yeah. So once you get them locked in the chute, yeah, make sure that their head is locked in the head catch. I put the head holder down to try to hold them a little bit more still. Uh, the less they, they move around while you're doing this, the better it is for you. So we've got a bar that we're going to put in behind their legs. And slide it in there just like that. When I get in there, I might push it up a little bit more. Um, the sole purpose of this is to pretty much keep them from kicking back at me, which is a huge possibility while I'm doing this. So um, that prevents them from really moving around anymore. So their backs are wet. Like I said, not crazy about this. I don't recommend doing it whenever there's any kind of moisture, but these guys only get run through the chute once a year as of right now. And I wanna make sure that they are getting poured. You try to run it down the back as much as you can. 
So when you send these samples in, this is the Bioprin blood test. So what you need to do is you need to firstly uh, start a numerical order of the number of cows that you've ran through. She is number 24 and she's going to be the 23rd that you ran through. Or she's going to be number 23. So yeah, I'm going to write that down in my app. 24 is P23. That's all you need to do so that when you submit the blood samples on paper, they have a sheet where you'll fill out what number's what. And it's just kind of a redundancy for when they're at the lab to make sure that they don't get switched up. And that way you have to write them down twice to make sure that they can cross-reference in case you, your handwriting isn't the prettiest like mine. I love having my gator here because I can throw all my supplies in it. Like, again, doing this in the snow is really not optimal. Um, eventually I'd like to get a building built up around the chute, but I wanted to make sure that our setup is how I want it to be first. And there's a couple changes I'd like to make yet before we build a building, um, but so far this is working really good for one person. So I went online and ordered a pack of these vacuum blood collection tubes. Uh, the red tops mean that you're collecting serum, which the test should tell you. Um, I go through I submit the samples to uh, the Wapon Vet Service Lab. I believe that's the name of it. Um, but anyway, I send the samples there. Uh, they have to be red topped. That's because they don't have anything to keep the blood from uh, coagulating. So you want it to. And then when they send it to the lab, they put it in a centrifuge, separate the uh, blood from the serum, I believe. Don't quote me on that. And then that's what they use to test. So we're going to grab one of these vials. And you can kind of do this in any order that you want. Um, I like to write down the number first. So here we've got our test vial. We're going to go ahead and tube number 24. Animal ID. She is P for pink tag number 23. I wrote that as slow and as accurate as I could. So 100 uh, collection vials ran about 50 bucks, $55. And they come with these collector tubes which look like this, they look like mini syringe bottles. Another thing that they come with is uh, disposable needles that are double-edged. It's a needle with two sides on it. So the pink sided is meant to go in to the collection cup. So we're gonna twist off that, and pull it off. The pink side always comes off first, for me anyway. Uh, you stick that little rubbery looking piece and to the collection tube, do not touch that because I'm like still 90% sure, 99.9% .9 sure there's a needle under there. Feels like one. Um, so you don't wanna stab yourself. So that is meant to pierce the vial. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, stick it into the cow's tail at a certain spot. I'll show you that in a second. And then once this is in place, we're gonna push the tube into the collection top cup. And if you did it right, the blood should start collecting into the tube. Um, I usually aim for about two thirds full. Uh, depending on where you read, they'll say sometimes you should just let the vacuum do its job until it stops collecting. Um, I found that if you do that, it'll literally fill completely full. So, um, got this in my right hand like this. Gives me my left hand free to lift your tail up. When I'm ready, Pull this off and we're good to go. This 88 series air equipped chute is amazing. On this model, the vet cage squeezes with the chute. Uh, about the only thing that that really causes, this is really my only criticism about the chute is that when you have it really squeezed down, it doesn't allow you to open the chute door all the way. Um, what would be nice is if they had a spot for you to lock it open like that. I mean, that kind of works, but I have it squeezed down just perfectly. And then that way it kind of locks the back end of the chute in place so it's not back here freely swinging around. Um, or if like I go to back up, 
if you don't have the chute on a level surface so that it doesn't uh, swing back towards me. We're looking at the back of number 23 here. She's been waiting very patiently for me, but she's been uh, freshly excrementing. So we're gonna lift her tail straight up. Now, well, oftentimes, it will be dirty back here. Um, if you got something to wipe it down with, a towel, whatever, I'll just use my finger. And then put that back down. It makes it much more clean. Reduces the chance for infection. Um, not exactly the most sterile thing using my glove. Like I said, I'm not a vet, but for me, it works. So one of the important things is when you're doing this, make sure the tail is pointed straight up. They say to go two inches up from the base of the tail, which there's a dip in the center of the tail right here. Um, I believe this is a vertebrae, yep, right there. Um, you don't wanna stab the vertebrae. So I like to go right in between those two, which is right here. So one thing that you wanna make sure you also don't do is go straight in. You also wanna go up at a slight angle. That is something that I forgot to do um, for the first few cows that I had done this to this year and it went a lot smoother once I started going at a slight, roughly 45 degree angle up. So we're gonna go right in the middle of the tail, right in the middle of that dip. We're searching for a vein. I'm sorry, honey. You go in until you can feel the vertebrae. Um, usually you wanna stop right there. You don't wanna push it anymore. Um, if you have to, once you put the vial on, and you don't get any blood out, you can pull the uh, collection cup back a little bit. So you're gonna go ahead, put the tube on. So you can see a little blood came in. I didn't get the plate placement quite right, so I can go ahead and pull out a little bit. Did you see how much more it started to fill? So I aim for about two thirds. That's the other heifer I got in here. Um, you go ahead and pull that off. Once you're done, you want to hold your finger on there for a couple seconds to stop the bleeding. Not all of them will bleed. Some of them will. Now she's done. So that took a little bit longer because I was explaining everything to you guys, but uh, usually it's real just quick in and out and the cows don't seem to hold too big of a grudge to me one thing I like to do is if I got like a bucket of oats or something to put in front of them or on the ground to keep them occupied that seems to work pretty good too but yeah that's how you collect blood I've got 50 cows left to go and um, I'm hoping to have them all done this week the snow might slow me down a little bit but I'm really hoping that I can be done um, and get these samples set off because there's a bred cow sale um, one of my intentions to possibly do is go uh, sell the cows that come back as open and then go buy bred heifers with the money. Um, that way I'm maintaining my herd numbers. It is extremely difficult to build your herd up over many years. That's what I did. I had a couple cows to start off with that mom and dad and grandpa all gave me over time. And I just kind of slowly built my herd off that. Um, then I went and bought another like 24 in 2018, I believe and that really helped but just to get up to 70 cows took me for between 2018 and today um and that's you know with cows that i had to sell uh, i wasn't keeping the best of records wasn't fully preg checking in the beginning i uh, started doing that and really just trying to fine tune things to make sure that we're not feeding animals that aren't producing uh, because i read that it can cost between three to four to up to five hundred dollars per year per animal uh, to keep them fed whereas the costs of accidentally selling a bread cow could be over two thousand um, dollars lost money in your pocket that's one of the reasons that i'm preg checking is to make sure that i am not getting rid of any cows that may be open um, this is they say about 95 percent accurate last year i had 100 percent accuracy um, i preferred standard is still to have the vet do it uh, however I had him here when we were working calves and I even told him it's like honestly for the cows instead of running them all into one big group and pushing them all through and you know being really stressful on the cows I don't have my gates completely set up how I would like them to be um, 
running the cows through to make sure they're not being stressed is important to make sure that they're not pushing the gates really hard and pushing the fences. So by doing the cows myself until I can get everything set up, uh, I'm going to keep pulling blood samples. I even told him that. It's like, honestly, if I can do it myself, and then that way I, um, he's not waiting on me because uh, he's a really busy guy too. So uh, he gave me a few pointers when he was, when he was here, and uh, I appreciate the input, Matt, because I'm going to use that to try to make everything uh, a lot safer for everybody whenever people help me. Uh, and then I'd like to kind of transfer what we're doing here over to the other farms uh, to make it easier to work cattle both over at Rockville and down at British. Order of how I do things when I'm locking them in is not exactly the reverse. I always release. Can you believe this crap? <laughs> oh man, if I had some oats for you, honey. This one's all right. She's honestly. That's probably her being angry. Um, you got to be careful around cows. Doesn't matter how nice they may seem. Um, a nice one can turn around on you in any second. So, all right. So first thing, whenever letting them out is always going to be the head, the head holder first. Is that better? Uh, the last thing I do is pull out the picker bar because when I release the head squeeze, the first thing, the first thing they want to do is. Uh, back up so that holds them in place so if you have more cows coming in the chute you can actually open it open up the end gate so the cows uh, in the holding pen can see them run out they're more apt to follow them out I I do that it works about 10% of the time when you're working by yourself but when it does it's awesome we release the head holder now we're gonna re release the and then we're good to I always close the head gate when I'm done working by myself because I have to go back and push the next cow up and I'll open up the rear gate and pull the bar out so then that way the cow gets fooled into coming into the chute and um, it's just that simple. That's pretty much it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat, All How Farms Work. And with that, we'll see you next time.